circus, dangerous duty for fearless daredevils. There's a risk. It's very dangerous. But it's a controlled risk. How far can we take it to the limits of extreme and entertaining? Circus performers call it safety, but it all boils down to physics. They're privy to secrets of nature that scientists are too. But for them, it's not really science, it's, it's intuitive. Let's take an inside look at the scientific wonders of the circus. How do acrobats fly? How do wire walkers stay aloft? How does anyone throw her body into the air and spin? It turns out circus performers get a lot of help from the laws of physics. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit more work though, yeah? Yeah. Physicist Timothy Halpin Healy is here at the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus to decode these secrets of nature. Yeah, you just get it down. That's nice. Almost looks like it'll go on forever. If you have a plate and you spin it up, it has a lot of uh, angular momentum, we say, you know, spinning around this axis. So it's very, very stable. What looks like magic to us is actually the fine interplay between matter and energy. In other words, physics at work. The star of the circus, Bello Knock, may look like a clown but he performs the most dangerous tricks in the show, like the sway pole act. I started practicing that act when I was about nine years old, a foot off the ground, six inches off the ground, and I slowly worked my way up to 10 feet, 30 feet, and now I'm all the way up to 78 feet. The sway pole is a flexible tube that reaches seven stories into the air. Bello must perch himself in the bucket and perform tricks that tip the sway pole over, but not too far. As long as he's right on top of the pole and the pole is perfectly plumb, everything's stable. But that's like standing on the top of a needle. You tip off to one side a little bit, you're in trouble. Just by leaning the slightest little bit this way, you see how much I move now? So he goes off a little bit, gravity wants to pull him over. But there's elasticity in the pole which wants to bring him back. Competition between these two things which establishes a period of oscillation. Negotiating these two forces, gravity and elasticity, is a life and death challenge for Bello. Without any net or safety device, more than one performer has lost his life in a sway pole accident. If Bello loses control of the physics at work, gravity will pull him over, beyond the point of no return. If I ever lean too far that way, it would just make too much weight for the pole to hold, and it would snap. There is a danger. If he goes too far off vertical, there's a critical point beyond which the pole itself will buckle and he'll just topple over. In the next act, Bello drives a motorcycle on a finger-thin high wire. How does he manage to keep himself and his 600-pound motorcycle balanced? A crucial physics concept in Bellow's motorcycle act is the notion of center of mass. And how small movements can shift that dramatically, or in micro-balancing movements, just to keep the apparatus stable. This bear uses the same principles of physics that we saw in Bellow's motorcycle act. The bear is dynamically stable because of the presence of these counterweights. The counterweights shift the bear's center of mass, the point at which an object or a person is perfectly balanced. If the red balls weren't there at all, 
then the center of mass would basically be at the bear's belly button. He's in trouble. Once you put the counterweights in, the center of mass drops below the wire, and it's a stable configuration. The counterweights are, in a crude sense, doing what Luis does in the act of Bello. Seven years ago, Luis started working for me. I needed someone that I could trust. We're sort of helping each other, fighting each other on balancing. It's probably taken them several years to develop a, an unspoken language, body gestures, to keep that motorcycle properly balanced. What you see in the beginning of the act is that Luis is crouched as far below the wire as possible. Luis acts as a counterweight, lowering the center of mass and creating stability for Bello. With the center of mass below the wire, Bello is less likely to be toppled by gravity. Every time you see Luis extends himself, he comes closer to the cable, the faster we can spin. By redistributing his weight, Luis shifts the center of mass above the wire, creating instability, which allows them to flip. They want to make sure they tumble through it, because the last thing that they want is to end up with the bike on the bottom and Luis upside down, because they would get stuck in that position. So what do you want to think about it? <laughs> don't come to the circus in search of physics, and for most of us it remains hidden. But what's really going on behind the artistry? After seeing the circus through the eyes of a physicist, you'll never look at an acrobat the same way again. I've been in the circus for six years with Ringing Brothers. I did gymnastics before, since I was three in Hungary. I think it's just within my blood. Alexandra Capte's talent for spinning earned her a place in the circus's bungee act, where physicist Tim Halpin Healy looks for clues about kinetic energy. So what's happening? While they're pulling on the rope on the side to raise her up, there's actually another fellow who's holding her physically down. The bungee cords, which are like giant rubber bands, are being stretched the opposing forces create a lot of potential energy. It's already been primed in a sense. The energy has been fed into the system. The bungee cords have been stretched. When they let us go, the bungee, it's like a slingshot. You just use the gravity to go up and down. Once the bungees are released, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy, or energy of motion. On the side of the bungee device, what they clip me on is this belt. And on this belt, there is a swivel, which allows me to turn as fast as I want. So I actually can just give a little spin to my body, and it's just going to spin me really, really fast. Since energy can neither be created nor destroyed, almost all of the energy that was stored in the bungees is expended through spinning. The challenge for Alexandra is not to spin too fast. There is a limit to how fast I turn because the blood is rushing through my hands or my head and it gives a really big pressure, so you don't want to spin that fast. I like to think of performers in the circus are ordinary people with extraordinary talents. And the only way they got it is you practice it and practice it and practice it. It is practice and physics that allow human beings to fly, hurtling up to 30 miles an hour, some 40 feet in the air. World-famous trapeze coach Vilen Govlenko choreographed the largest flying act in Ringling Brothers history, the Angels of Fire. I create this act because I try to make something different from every trapeze act. I try to make aerial ballet. Ничего, ничего, ничего. 
one of the acts which I really enjoyed was the Angels of Fire. To a physicist, a trapeze swing is really just a pendulum. When the catcher flips himself over and hangs from his legs, gets into catch position, his mass is being distributed further from the axis, the period is being lengthened. The longer the period, the slower the motion. That's crucial. Uh, they don't have stopwatches out, but the trapeze artists, they're just keying into the rhythm of oscillation of the catcher's swing. Once the release from the swing is made, there will be a certain amount of time in flight, in free fall, subject to the forces of gravity. An Olympic caliber gymnast, Oksana Krushkina performs one of the most difficult tricks in the act. Up. The first time I ever tried to fly, it was back in Russia. I was 19 years old, just a real girl. <laughs> I was hanging on on the bar, and then somebody started screaming, just let it go, let it go. <laughs> it was just so exciting to just let myself go. The hardest trick I do in this flying act, it was long jump. You'll feel it so light and so high after you've done something. Then you're getting so proud of yourself. <laughs> How does Oksana create the illusion that she is flying? It has to do with the path her body takes, which physicists call a parabolic arc. After a quick, steep climb, she slows down and spends most of her time at the top of the arc. The flyer is not spending half the time at half the top height. Spending half the time in the top 25% of that trajectory, hanging in the air. This trick of nature creates the illusion that the flyer is defying the laws of gravity. To make it look easy is, of course, the secret of the circus. Newton was actually accused that he had destroyed humankind's appreciation of the rainbow because he had explained it. And I just, I never understood that because I understand rainbows. I know where to look to find rainbows. But what does that mean? It means I can see a lot of rainbows. And I can also teach other people where to look for the rainbow.